He was also first on developing product warranty. Another first, which is something that is often missed, is that McCormick was probably the first to have a full product recall. In 1853, in an attempt to develop a machine that would both harvest grain and would cut hay, they made a bad machine. And the machines didn't work, and the farmers were furious. But they went out, and they replaced the gearing in every single one of the machines that they had sold. It's one of the reasons the farmers loved the McCormick Company. It had tremendous goodwill. The success of this system of sales and service, the first of its kind, took him to the top of the farm machinery industry despite intense competition and the termination of his patents. Over the years, he expanded his line and improved it. When the Civil War broke out, McCormick, a Virginian, supported the South. Ironically, his reaper contributed to the victory of the North. Because when all of these young men, and in fact middle-aged men, went off to fight in the Civil War from the North, the labor that they took with them was replaced by the uh, harvester, which had been improved so that it actually saved even more labor than the earlier version of the machine. And the other way it contributed was because England had a very bad harvest in 1861, and they needed food instead of cotton. And so we could ha harvest so much wheat that we could not only feed the Northern Army, we could also export wheat to England. And that kept England out of the war and kept England from siding with the South. John D. Rockefeller. He decided from the beginning that refining oil was where he was going to make his fortune. By running a 1,000-barrel-a-day refinery, uh, Rockefeller uh, was able to cut his costs uh, in half, the cost per unit, which meant he could undersell anybody, uh, any other competitor, by a great deal. In other words, he took advantages of scale economies. Sanders' only asset was his recipe for frying chicken and an idea for franchising. Hitting small restaurants, he offered his spice blend in exchange for a five-cent royalty on every chicken they sold. By 1960, they had over 200 franchise outlets and were earning $100,000 a year. At the age of 77, Jack Simplot presides over a network of business enterprises that extends around the world. His products are marketed in all 50 states and more than a dozen countries. His holdings include tens of thousands of acres of cattle ranches, as well as gold, phosphate, and silica mines. He has chemical fertilizer and synthetic fuel businesses, and he is one of the largest processors of potatoes in the world. He amassed his fortune of a half billion dollars from the land and its resources. He has personally maintained control over his vast empire for 40 years.